So, uh, status update for the TSS2 user space. This is kind of a milestone for us. Um, in past, uh, well, conferences like this, LSS and a few others, we've, uh, we've done some, some talks about this, but they've always been focused on you know, the large architecture, what the APIs are, how the plumbing works, how everything fits together. And, uh, you know, we've, and of course then, you know, the, the evolution of the project from a really rough prototype to, you know, our goals and aspirations to having like a real stable uh, piece of, of, of infrastructure that, you know, people just rely on and use like it's, you know, part of the ecosystem. Um, and so today doing this, this as, a, as an update, it's, you know, kind of mission accomplished. I'm doing a lot less work these days. Uh, the presentations are shorter, they're much less complicated, and, you know, I'm fighting through far, far fewer bugs than we used to. Plus, our, uh, our community has grown quite a bit, which is really nice. So today, I'm doing a status update, and uh, I'll cover just this past year, our progress on uh, the core libraries, uh, things that I think of as just the plumbing, uh, and then we'll move on to work to enable the, uh, the use of the TPM through uh, plugins to existing kind of cryptographic frameworks and, and well-used uh, uh, programming APIs and such. Uh, then finally, we're just going to close on a little bit of uh, uh, what you would expect, which is kind of, you know, forward-looking, things we'll be doing in the future, uh, and things we'll be looking for some, you know, some input from, from you all on, things you may actually want to contribute to if you're, you're interested in getting going. Uh, but first, the plumbing. So our goals have always been for this to, to really improve the maturity of the project, uh, get a real good release cadence down, add new features without, you know, destabilizing APIs, really, you know, what you would expect from a, a mature project. Um, we've got a new uh, github.io page now, so we're working on improving our documentation, uh, which, you know, is not as much fun as, as uh, doing the coding, but it's kind of just part of the, the business. Uh, we've got our code coverage metrics that we're collecting through all of our CI loops. We've reached 80% uh, average for the project. Some are a bit above, some are a bit below, um, but 80% uh, on average. Uh, we've also started doing um, some work with uh, the Linux Foundation's uh, uh, the, the core infrastructure initiative. So we've gone through the self-certification process for these, these core libraries uh, through the CII, which is nice. Get a little badge on your readme file on GitHub, and um, I don't know, everyone thinks you're uh, uh, special for it. Um, so the, the core libraries themselves, the TPM2-TSS uh, repository, that house, or that, that houses um, the real guts of the project. So we've done uh, three minor releases this year, no major releases, which is nice. The APIs are stable. Um, and uh, we're hitting a good release cadence of, you know, every uh, four or five months. Uh, we've added a couple, or we've added a new library uh, to help uh, with user experience. One of the biggest problems that we had all along is that when errors happen, you basically have a, a, a hex number that tells you what the response code means, and you have to go and manually pull it apart. One of the first things that I did for the project was to write a tool that did this on the command line, but still no one ever uses it. We still get people that just send us, you know, the, the hex digits over the mailing list and ask us to decode them for them. Uh, but we turned it into a library, and we're starting to integrate this library into the project, uh, so you should be getting much, much more understandable messages out of there. Uh, that's already done and out there. The TCTI loader got a little stuck. I, the TCG uh, does all the documents uh, or all the specifications in Word files. I'm not particularly great with Microsoft Word, so I kind of screwed it up. It was supposed to be in public review now, uh, but it got held up for a week because I uh, don't know Word all that well. But uh, it's under review now. That should be out, hopefully, for public review next week. Uh, and, you know, the next major thing we're pushing towards here is the feature API. This is uh, something that we had a, you know, there's been a, a public review version of this out for almost five years now, but uh, there's been a lot of churn since, and we should have uh, another version of this out, hopefully with an implementation uh, following it. Uh, this is something that our, our friends and collaborators at Infineon and uh, uh, Fraunhofer have been working on with us. So that's not out just yet, but you should be seeing that sometime in the fall. Uh, the tools, uh, the command line tools, are probably the things that people use the most and has, got, has seen a whole lot of churn this year. Uh, we've done two minor releases since the last LSS, and just yesterday, Bill Roberts, who has been pushing a lot of this forward, actually has been the main driving force behind it, uh, put out the first release candidate for our 4.0 uh, tool, uh, release of the tools. 
this is a big improvement in that it aligns all of our, com our the command line parameters that were unfortunately a bit scattered in the past. So Bill sunk a lot of time into cleaning this up, uh, and you know we're very grateful for that stuff. Uh, also, during this 4.0 release uh, has been a port uh, with the tools. Previously, they had used one of the very low-level APIs, the system API, which really wasn't intended for use uh, at this level, but it was the only thing we had available when we started the project. Now that we have an implementation of the Enhanced System API that wraps up a lot of uh, uh, the details that um, the tools used to do themselves, uh, the, the tools now gets things like auth session support and much better, uh, um, uh, uh, hopefully, support over the long run, too. So uh, all of the, the session support means we can do things like sessions with the TPM, so HMAX, uh, and uh, um, stuff like that. The resource manager, the user space resource manager is kind of uh, being used less and less as the one in the kernel uh, gets more features and, uh, and, and uh, distros pick up uh, newer kernels. So we've only had two minor releases since the last LSS. Uh, in those releases, I've added uh, context gap handling, fixed some bugs in our, our partial read support at the TCTI layer, that's the transport layer. Uh, and largely, I've just been focusing on stability there. So in... Uh, enabling um, some of the existing use cases that we're trying to, to go for. Um, we've developed an OpenSSL engine that plugs into the existing engine API, uh, and we have support for, uh, in the 1.0 release that happened, I think, back in the spring, uh, the OpenSSL command works, so you can get random digits or you can get random uh, data from the, the, uh, the TPM. Uh, the RSA, ECDSA commands work. Um, some of the X509, like request, the certificate request, uh, will also work as well, so you could sign certificate requests with the key that's in the TPM. Uh, we did a, a, a presentation and a demo at FOSDEM in the spring, um, and there's a great demo of uh, the S server uh, using a, uh, doing an SSL uh, connection to a client where the server has its uh, key in the TPM. Uh, this is the, the work of Andreas Fuchs, uh, one of our collaborators from Germany and Fraunhofer. The PKCS 11 work uh, got a little bit slowed down on account of a couple people, uh, you know, a little bit of attrition. It's hard to hold on to good help. Uh, and uh, that got held up a bit while Bill was focusing on the tools release. Um, so it's usable now for authentication, and we have uh, that, that link there is to a commit where to adding some documentation for using uh, the PKCS 11 plugin with uh, OpenSSL for authentication. Um, the nice thing about this, though, is that we're able, to, we're going to align it now with the feature API work because uh, a PKCS 11 uh, library or plugin rather needs to have some kind of uh, uh, storage so that it can, you know, basically be the token that you would expect to be on a smart card. This means you had to implement a, uh, a database, a key database, which is something that's going to be in the feature API anyways. And so holding up that work wasn't a bad thing because it means that we can just rebase it on this API that we are hoping to have out by the end of the year. And then we get the, the key database for free, which is really nice. Uh, finally, myself, I've been focusing a bit on uh, uh, enabling some, some UEFI use cases. This last year was a prototype, um, but it's moved into the proper project uh, now, and I've set up a whole pile of automated testing using um, the, the software TPM, the OVMF firmware, QMU, and the UEFI shell, and I've got a whole bunch of example code that's up there now, and all of those things run in CI. So when we do a build of this, it kicks off a Travis build that actually will set up a full uh, a virtual environment to run uh, the UEFI um, under, which is pretty interesting to set up. It's really useful. I got a little bit of a blog post down there describing it. Now, finally, things that we're, we're heading towards in the next year um, is actually some stuff that we have that's kind of gonna happen pretty quickly, I hope. We've had an RFC out there from, from Fraunhofer uh, for some bindings to Python for since about January. Um, they used the FFI interface, and it wasn't particularly object-oriented, so you know, we, we went back and took a look and decided to go the route of using SWIG, set up Pi, um, and it uses much more of the what you'd expect from Python you know, objects. Uh, that's imminent. It's right now under review inside of Intel before public release, so Intel uh, is getting pretty uh, rigid about uh, reviewing stuff before it goes out the door as open source, and this is, you know, it's got caught in the net and will get a, is gonna get a pretty, uh, pretty good look before it gets out the door. So can't say exactly when it's gonna be there, but we're hoping it's gonna be soon. Uh, and we're hoping to go the route, uh, the same route for additional languages. Uh, more bindings, more support, um, just makes it more usable for everyone else. Uh, Crypt setup uh, and Lux, uh, support for Lux is, uh, uh, has been a pull request against the Crypt setup uh, repo for about eight months now. 
Um, they're finally starting to make some progress on it. Uh, they didn't want to implement or use the TPM APIs directly. They want to have kind of a layer in between them so that they can support generic tokens. And so uh, it looks like we're going to be the first use case for this token interface uh, in Crypt setup. And that's the, a link right there to, their, um, to the merge request that um, Andreas put up a, a while back. And you can see some of the notes from the folks at Crypt setup that are working on it. Uh, finally, myself, I've been looking, like I was saying, at some of the, the firmware stuff, and so I've been parsing some of that, that event log uh, information. And as more and more of these kind of disparate formats come together, and you know, folks probably heard Monty talking about this unified format for these things, um, it might be useful for, for us to have some kind of standard API there. There's no work on that just yet. I've got a pile of code that does it, um, but I think eventually we're going to have to make make an, a, a library so that folks that are implementing, you know, attestation responders and verifiers will, will have some help um, and won't have to write it all themselves from scratch. And that's it. So if anyone has any questions, uh, we've got, uh, you can go to any of the project sites, you can go to the, the github.io page, you'll find our readmes there. We have a link to our IRC channel, mailing list, instructions for you know, submitting uh, um, contributions through GitHub, and uh, you know, that's um, a great resource to get started. Any questions? Okay, thanks, Philip.